the dignified people of Southern Cameroon, our proud people of Ambazonia, my dear compatriots, the moment of truth for us as a people and as a nation to stand up like one man and take our destiny into our hands has come. That moment of truth which demands that we rise and embrace our purpose in life as a nation is now. That crucial moment to redirect our focus, our energies to the unconditional liberation and freedom of the Southern Cameroons is now. The smoke from the empty bag of hot air called Major Dialogue has dissipated. Those who had rushed to Yaoundé with the illusion that the colonial masters could somehow talk to themselves and find a solution to the war Bia had declared on the Southern Cameroons are definitely hiding in shame. The highly condescending, disdainful and contemptuous treatment of us as a people was on open display for all to see, thanks to our elevated slaves and enablers. On the 26th of September, I made it clear to you that these people were being assembled in Yaoundé to teach us how to wear our new chains of slavery. You now know that our latest chains of slavery are called special status. My people, what an insult to us as a nation, to us as a people. What do these people think they are to offer us something called a special status? And they have the audacity to offer us something called a status in their own country. Where did our nation of Southern Cameroons go to that French Cameroonians are now offering us a special status in theirs? Are they saying by this humiliating conduct that our state, the Southern Cameroons, had been melted down to inexistence by their fraud, their tricks, their violence, and their theft? They must believe we are idiots to let them steal our whole nation from us, and then we turn around and dance to accept special status in exchange for the nation we brought into a union with them. What arrogance, what audacity, what insanity. The wider world watched us as the beer-appointed lot from southern Cameroons assembled in Yaoundé for their charade. We all saw the high levels of theatrics engaged by the various teams of enablers and elevated slaves. We witnessed the Atanganji version of his recruited Amber boys being introduced on stage before the whole world that they took up arms against the government and are now putting them down. These desperate supporters of this violent government will stop at nothing in trying to give us and our freedom fighters a bad name. They all fall into the group of historical cowards that want the easy thing, the normal thing, the quick fix. They are the cowards who cannot say no. They just want to keep using the name of the suffering people to advance their personal, political, and group agendas. Sorry to say it's over. Sorry to say it won't happen in this generation. We are strong enough to say no, no, and never again. Our generation challenges both you and our oppressors to wait and see what we Ambazonians are made of. We will never wear your chains of slavery called special status. Not today, not tomorrow, and not ever. Special status, my foot. One of the most shocking things in this shameless political maneuvering was the high levels of intellectual dishonesty displayed. Apart from a handful of exceptions, a large majority of the intellectuals present played a dishonest part to dishonor our people. If we ordinary people were to add up the piles of certificates assembled by the education these people brought into this hall 
in terms of accolades from grandmasters through doctors to professors in all imaginable fields of learning, the pious would definitely be higher than the Fako Mountain. Yet, the real honest value of those certificates, judging from the conduct of their dishonest holders, would be lying in the gutters of Moya at the very foot of the mountain. The high value of education was led to mud and squalor in that assembly, in their failed effort to chain us onto perpetual slavery. And how woefully they failed. In my humble opinion, what came out as the greatest humiliating act of all to us Southern Cameroonians at the charade was the condescending identity tactic deployed by some of the killers who are literally directing the genocide on our people by wearing our dignified traditional dresses. It hurt me profoundly and I suddenly realized that the mentality of the slave masters has not changed from the late 15th centuries when the first attempts were made to take African slaves across the Atlantic. In my endless research on the history of black slavery in the Americas, I read severally of how some slave masters used to call large assemblies of their farm slaves each time they were fierce of an uprising or a rebellion in the presence of their whole family of friends and relatives. The purpose of these assemblies will be to teach the rebellious slaves a good lesson in public and show support for the elevated slaves who always side with the master against their people. The culprits would then be lined up for savage beatings or hangings, as the case may be, before the master arrives. In order to impress and to get praise from the rest of the slave population, the slave master would, for the occasion, put on a slave-made straw hat or use a slave-made whip to skin the rebel slaves. This would draw applause from the other slaves as they rejoiced that the master had shown love for them by using some slave-made item while killing their own brothers. The slave master would, after this cruelty, immediately throw a party for everyone to drink and eat their fill, while the crushed and broken slaves lay bleeding to death behind the same feasting crowd. At the Yaoundé party, we saw the gleeful joy in the reactions and admirations of some of our elevated slaves towards their masters wearing our handmade traditional dresses. And in the five days that this meaningless drama was supposedly going on about us, their military killed 37 Ambazonians. Mark my words, 37 of us lay dead while they drank, sang, and danced in Yaoundé, in our name. Indeed, the tactics of the slave master has not changed for 600 years. Do these corrupt and selfish Southern Cameroonian lot supporting this fraudulent and evil government realize that they are trying to hand over the whole nation of Ambazonia, its peoples and its lands, its seas and air spaces, its overall sovereignty and dignity to their dubious masters in exchange for a poisoned bag of smoke called special status? Are they aware that this is a simple empty privilege what they are supporting is similar to a slave master calling a meeting with his slaves and advising them to burn down their living quarters built for them by their forefathers and come to live in the pig fence behind the master's house because there will be more space for everybody among the pigs. That is the meaning of having a special status 
at the expense of your nation. My dear compatriots, we should all know that Bia and his nation of La Republic to Cameroon have neither the power nor the legitimacy to give us anything, talk less of a special status. Bia and his ruling class are the problem for their country, La Republic to Cameroon. They are the thieves of our own country, the Southern Cameroon. The problem can never become the solution. You cannot be practicing a genocide on our people and turn around to give us a special status. What status is he talking about here? Is he giving us a special status in death? What is the special status of the thousands he has killed? Are we sure these people are not doing what they are doing to us and borrowing a leaf from Adolf Hitler? We brought a nation into a union of two equal partners with the same status with these brutal people. And 58 years after, we have now become the invalid and the cripple that deserves a special status in order to survive. What hell, what nonsense. My people, we have to keep in mind that all free nations in the world had their freedom only when they stopped listening to their oppressors and started fighting them instead. Let's stop listening to these people. Freedom comes from denying the oppressor and fighting the oppressor. The oppressor never gives the oppressed freedom. Fighting oppression by all means is a right for the oppressed. The oppressed of every nation fought hard and sacrificed their blood to win freedom. Our blood has been sacrificed in the thousands and the blood has flown like a river into a sea. We sacrifice that blood in order to take back our stolen nation and not to be given by whosoever something called special status by people who have no status themselves. My dear compatriots, going forward, as the hot air has finally seeped out of the balloon of the dead Yaoundé monologue, leaving a void behind it, even the international community is now beginning to question in reality what these political hysterics achieved. The answer is very simple, nothing. That is why we said that whatever would be said there or done there will have no bearing on our people. But that does not mean that we, the revolutionaries of the Southern Cameroons and Bazonia, are opposed to talks or negotiations proper, far from it. Our position on this has always been very clear, that once the minimum conditions are met by the government of the Republic of Cameroon, our people will be ready to talk. And the five conditions are simple. One, recognition of the state of Southern Cameroons that our forefathers brought into this union. Two, withdrawal of all military forces from our towns and cities. Three, release of all prisoners without preconditions. Four, granting of a general and unconditional amnesty to all. And five, that such talks be mediated and hosted by a trusted third party nation, which should invite the UN, the US, the UK, France, Germany, and Canada, since the aim of such talks is to correct the huge historical mistakes made by the UN, the UK, and France in the decolonization process in 1960 and 61. And we are the people of La Republic to choose not to talk to us. We will challenge them from now on to turn Yaoundé into one large prison and bring in the French army in addition because we will make them have the easy choice of either jailing all of us 
or killing all of us before taking over our homeland. Millions of us are ready to give our blood to save our own nation. We Ambazonians are ready for the supreme sacrifices that will be needed to take back the stolen nation of the Southern Cameroons from the Republic of Cameroon. We have a formidable spirit which they don't know about. We have an unbreakable spirit which they do not know about. We have an unquenchable spirit for freedom that no guns and bombs can blast away. We are a tough and rugged nation that will give everything it takes to free its people from slavery. We have proven this invincibility over the last three years. We are ready for the next three years. And if we were to multiply three by ten, we will stand and do it until our people are free. Freedom has no price and we are ready to pay the ultimate price to the last man, woman, and child standing, we will stand up and fight to free our people. My dear comrades, our pride always comes from the courageous Ambazonians in the homeland. They have continuously made us proud with their actions rather than with their words. We should learn from them. I salute the people of the homeland with a humble heart, knowing what you go through every day to hold back the oppressor. I salute your will of steel and your resolute determination to stand up like one man and prove to the world that our resolve to serve determination and freedom will never be altered by anyone be the enemy, friend, or brother. Your great unity and strength on Independence Day, 1st October 2019, was a high point for all of us. That was your national show of total unity. That was your national show of total strength. That was your living proof that Ambazonia and its people's revolution is absolutely irreversible. The world watched with admiration at the beautiful and yet daring celebrations throughout the nation of Southern Cameroons. We definitely know that from Yaoundé, the enemies watched in disbelief and shock at our resilience. My address to you today is a clarion call to the revolutionary to get on duty. We, the Southern Cameroonians, must rise up and take the sole responsibility of liberating the people and the nation of Amazonia. Our focus, our purpose, and our energy must be driven in this one direction and nothing else. When duty calls, the duty conscious responds. Those who have the courage and know how revolutions are done and the belief in our God-given right to a free nation should now stand up and be counted. The blood of the thousands of our slain martyrs calls us to that duty. The blood of baby Martha and the other babies killed by La Republique du Cameroon calls us to that duty. The cries of the wounded and the broken call us to that duty. The destitution of our prisoners of freedom call us to the same duty. The daily suffering of the tens of thousands of Amazonians living without hope in refugee camps in Nigeria calls us to duty. The daily despondence of the internally displaced calls us to duty. The daily struggle of whole communities hemmed in by the killer military of the Republic of Cameroon calls us to that duty. The hour by hour struggle to stay alive, to defend our people and our communities by our fearless liberation soldiers call us to duty. And the last but not the least, the distant cry of the unborn child calls us to immediate duty.
because we need to build a new country for them. The homeland has given everything to this struggle to get us where we are. They are ready to give more. But where are we? We must now stop the noise and begin to learn that we have to do dangerous work of establishing an independent and free homeland. Ambazonia shall live in freedom. God shortened our struggle. God continue to bless Ambazonia. Thank you very much. Thank you.